Hey guys, welcome back to Metroid Zero Mission. In the last part, we took out Big Bad Craig, and in this part, we're gonna go ahead and make our way towards Ridley's Lair. Yeah. So, yeah, quite a few upgrades, most notably the speed booster. And in this part right here, you actually have to be careful. Make sure you use your missile upgrades, because these guys will team up on you really, really quickly. And if you don't use your missiles, you're not gonna take them out quick enough with your ice beam. So yeah. yeah. Granted, what, right what? in the middle of all that lava. Yeah, they'll knock you down, you'll take damage, and you have to go back around in a circle. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, and right here for this energy upgrade, as you can see, you have to time your jump to where you jump at the very end of that little stretch of um, ground to break those funnel blocks over there. Not too bad. There are some. There are certainly some speed booster segments that do get a lot more annoying later in the game, if you decide to go for 100%, like I mentioned before. Hmm. Yeah. Derpy eyes. He will be missed. Derpy eyes. <laughs> Derpy eyes. <laughs> we'll see you again eventually. And <laughs> <laughs> And now we're introduced to a uh, big bad Rilly or Trogdor. <laughs> uh, sure. We're heading to the don't disturb him. <laughs> I love the eye. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Well, it's what I imagine really listening to as he makes his way to Rexham Shop. That's and that's the song for, for soaking fear into his enemies and apparently statues. <laughs> the song was so badass, the statue just, just crumpled away at its greatness. I think it's kind of neat how they have the, the low Egyptian type Chozo statues in the background. It kind of oh. goes with the whole like mythical motif that they go for with the Chozo here. Oh, it's, it's yeah. not actually required to go to these statues to continue, right? Um, in most cases, no, but sometimes they are in the way, from what I can tell. That's actually a good question. I don't think it is required. And usually when I play, I go I go to them anyway, so I never really thought about it. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that in some cases, like like right here, it's kind of showing that you have to backtrack to go in one area and everything. It certainly helps. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of implied, it, you know, really heavily implied by breaking a wall there. You know, in case you did, in case that wall didn't break, I mean, I suppose it's completely unnecessary. You would have just had to take a while to guess where you had to go. True. Here you're hmm. trying to use the speed booster, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, I mean, it, I'm, I was also trying to test out some of the mechanics here, because it's been a while since I've played through the game. But, um, well, okay, here's the mechanic it seems like I was trying to test out there. That actually didn't work out. Good thing you brought that up. You see how there's a little stretch of land there, right? Yep. Well, you need a certain stretch of land to run through in order to build up a speed, you know, to charge up a speed booster or whatnot, right? And um, what I was trying to test out was to see, you know, since I was a fake wall there... I was trying to test it out to where if you kept on running after a certain amount of time, and then you jump forward and kept going forward to see if it would keep keep building your momentum. Oh. But if you jump, but if you jump, it actually cancels it out. So that's why it looked a little stupid right there. Yeah. But um, some other mechanics about the speed booster or the science park, like I was mentioning before, one other mechanic you're gonna have to get used to if you 100% it is um, buffering or maintaining your charge. And in order to do that, what you have to do is you have to start a charge up. Um, store it by pressing down and then press forward in a direction when you hit an incline and the incline will make Samus stand up and she'll maintain her charge for longer than normal so you're going to have to really get used to that for speed boosting parts to seem like they're way further away from an, op an open area I see like I'll mention when we get to like an incline where I see like okay maybe right here is where you could probably store a charge sure you won't see me you do it later in the game but uh, if you look up some some uh, guides on how to 100% it, you'll see where you have to do it. It's necessary in quite a few places. Like right there in the little area to the left, that little incline, um, you probably could have done it there. What you would do is you would aim like leftwards and then like instead of stopping or instead of hitting the wall there, she would keep on running upwards. I see. And as you can see here, I need to unlock another map to see where I have to go down there or figure my way out. And this looks like a fake wall down there, but it actually, I think it isn't. Because if it would have been fake, then um, it would have revealed something. Yeah. 
Although it, it still strikes me as kind of odd, though, because, I mean, you can see there's a space down there, so it kind of infers that, you know, that's kind of fake. There's more to this area. But, yeah. There might be, but probably just done. There might, it might not have intertwined with the area below. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Right here, you have to go. Hmm? Or right here, you have to go ahead and um, build up us to speed, but I did it way too early. As you can see, the wall, the floor here is also breakable. What were you about to say? I know, no, it's, it's just the fact that, uh, like, uh, like it's one thing that kind of, something that they maintain, I suppose, here, but, like, I, I don't really mind it, like, you know, if you, uh, if you want to check to see if something's fake and everything, you know, you just use the, uh, use the more fall bombs to check everything and see where everything is at and everything. That's something I really don't mind happening and everything. Or, I don't really mind doing. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Now, um, one of the other mechanics about that, that actually is important about the speed boosting is you need to, um, well, it's possible to maintain a charge past the door. So you actually need to use that. You need to, you need to abuse that to go through a majority of the game. Like, it is necessary to learn that mechanic. Which is pretty straightforward. Sure. As you can see here, there's not enough space there to, to build up a speed boost unless you go through that door. So there's another way to really teach a player. Oh, yeah. Missile! Get the missile! Yeah, that's when, this is when OCD tendencies can really uh, bug you. You see it right there. And it, it definitely looks possible without the without the high jump, which is what you need to get it. But, um, you have to time a more fall, more fall sequence pretty well to get it. Oh. And, um, another little tidbit, um, it actually isn't advised that you do it. You could, probably could do it pretty easily. You know, I probably could have done it if I would have focused enough there. But, um, if you actually get the missile upgrade, it looks like you could probably get stuck there, now that I think about it. Probably. Because you're supposed to get the high jump boots. It's kind of interesting. I didn't really think about it. But, um, the high jump boots allow someone to jump higher in this, and, uh, the rest, for the rest of the game. Oh, obviously. But another added effect is it allows you to jump on more fall mode. Which in previous games was, uh, a separate power up you had to get. <laughs> in that place, it's hot. Well, I, like, I don't understand. Like, this below us, this is lava, right? So, what was the difference between this and the other one? Uh,. It's hotter than the other one? I don't know. Yes. The other one was red. That's the difference. <laughs> I like my right, I get royal. So, I never really thought about it, but... Yeah, it looks like you can get stuck there. Unless you start wall jumping if you go out there beforehand. Yeah, actually, you probably could. <laughs> Highly <laughs> unadvised, though, so... It's not worth it, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Slug! And as you can see, our bad pathway is kind of uh, obstructed there. It's a wild Snorlax. Only not really. Yeah, I need to get the Pokey Flute. <laughs> wow, Snorlax, you've grown to look a lot uglier. What happened? Uh, uh, and now another popular mechanic, the backtracking. Yeah. Again, the tracking of the back. Yeah, it's definitely done a little more uh, naturally in other games. But at least in this game, it definitely points in the right direction. There's a time about though. Well, what's that? Well, I was just on time about there. You mean. I, you, you know, you would. You wouldn't guess you would have to go all the way up there and everything without the hint. Yeah, but another and it's like Super Metroid, like uh, the game did was a lot less obvious with the with its hints. Like, granted, it was pretty. It, it would have been a little easy to get lost in Super Metroid, but it kind of insinuated where you had to go with the way that the map was designed. The way the map was designed and the sequence of events happened is it basically makes you go around Sibis, and Sibis is a, has a different layout Super Metroid. It makes you go across. It makes you go around it in a circle. I see. So, 
definitely it was brilliant gameplay design for its time, and still is, still holds up really well to this day. Well, I know the way um, Metro Prime usually did work with backtracking was when you needed to backtrack, it was usually um, a power up that you just got that lets you go to an elevator that lets you uh, make a shortcut between where you need to go and where you are now. That way, it's not so tedious. That's a, that's actually also very smart too. I never actually considered that. So yeah, um, something else I didn't address. Um, those statues were actually, you know, they're not just random statues that were there that I guess the space pirates put there like, hey, Samus, step in here. They're left there by the ancient Chozo race, which is actually the race that um was wiped out, I suppose, by the space pirates, if I'm not mistaken, and they raised Samus. Which is why she's so familiar with these statues and so trusting with it, I don't know. Something to that effect. Well, I mean, it, 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 it makes it makes you kind of wonder who Samus' real parents were, though. Which sadly was addressed in Metroid Other M in a very, very horrible way, which will now be spoken. <laughs> I can appreciate it trying, but I don't appreciate it sucking. How? <laughs> the, 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 oh, God, the baby. I, it, that just reminds me of a picture of a, of a tab that... That was made from Fan Gamer, which makes it also close, by the way. But um, it was ta- one of the tags that they make for, uh, like, when you make an order, it'll, uh, they'll, sometimes an artist will make a drawing of, like, something. So they did one for Metroid, and it says Metroid Generations, and it shows, uh, it shows other M, uh, Sam is crying and saying, the baby. And you see, I'm assuming the Super Metroid, uh, Sam is looking at her like, uh, get a grip, it's gonna be okay. And, uh, fan gamer, fan gamer for those who, um, aren't, you know, aren't, who aren't in the know, it's a website of, uh, graphic designers who are video game enthusiasts, and they make, uh, video game themed shirts. And they're actually really cool, you know, really high quality, so definitely recommend checking out the website if you have a chance. And if you're looking for some apparel that, uh, it's actually pretty high quality. Advertisements, you will love them. Well, I mean, it's not it's not a plug if it's not our website or a campus <laughs> plug. I suppose it is still a plug. And right here, I suppose it'd be a little easy to get lost, as you can see, um, disappearing blocks. What you gotta do is you gotta space it out to where you can make your make that jump even with the high jump boot, as you can see. No, you know this one's the a little easy specific, to do. But, yeah. Well, you can use the enemy though. I mean, I suppose you can go ahead and make sense. <laughs> You could take the easy way out. Yeah, but if you don't use enemy, you gotta time your jump pretty specifically. I'm actually gonna get one of the most useful power ups in the game. Right here in a second. One Sonomus probably, probably looks a little unfamiliar for those who, uh. Well, who are used to seeing her for Smash Brothers. Oh, yeah. You know, off the you'll see Samus is, uh. Oh yeah, that's another key little element or gimmick. These bugs actually become useful. It's actually pretty cool how it was introduced there. Like you kind of, it kind of, you see them destroy the little plant camp before you go ahead and go through this area. Very and you'll see why. Down, you'll sure. see why. Just in a second. Jump, probably jump. You have the spring jump. <laughs> you have the timing. No, he could just, he could just more fall jump while he's right there. Which doesn't have to deal with all of that. Well, at this time, I didn't realize that the more ball jump came with it. I forgot about that. Uh, uh, it, unless you jump that high? Yeah, as you can see, that's why I'm sitting here doing more ball jumps. <laughs> you know, you're using more ball bomb jumps. And now we got the various suit, and you're going to see a very familiar Samus, who um, from Metroid 2 is actually... The way you always see her, like in box art and up in other words or other games. And uh, what the suit does, what the suit does is it basically halves your damage, I believe, and allows you to travel through very specific color lava, but not all lava because you know well, that think, doesn't make sense. I, I think in the description it says that it protects you from acid, so I'm guessing orange is acid and red is lava. Then. So I guess it makes more sense. Oh yeah. yeah. From a chemistry point of view, not necessarily. Well, I mean, I guess. Okay. Orange with who, orange who equals. Fill, who would fill this with 
with acid. I mean, acid wouldn't. Oh, okay, never mind. I, I'm not going to get into video game logic. I'm not game theory here. Yeah, but. I mean, we're, we're talking about <laughs> a woman with the suit that lets her compress herself into a ball because she learned it from bird people. I mean, well, Nintendo I mean, that makes logic. Sense. Nintendo <laughs> logic. That's that's the best way of putting it. God, it's kind of painful to watch this, how I'm not using, you know, morph wall jump. <laughs> well, they can talk to your past self. So, how, how exactly does respawning enemies work? Is this the same enemy before? Or does another one come in? I don't... I mean, That's I, a I good guess question. It, would, it, it would kind of suck if it's like, you know, you can live forever, but you're at the mercy of this person who loves blowing <laughs> shit up. But do they revive? Uh, do they revive if, you, they, if the room is never visited again? That was a terrible way of putting it, but well, we'll continue this debate later. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. <laughs>